Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I have even more arpeggiator tips and tricks for you. Specifically in this video, I want to cover the drag and drop features within the arpeggiator. You heard that right, the arpeggiator in Logic Pro has a drag and drop MIDI function that a lot of people don't even know about. And I'll also talk about one other hidden feature in the arpeggiator called Silent Capture. These techniques are gonna be really helpful if you like building MIDI sequences in the arpeggiator and then dragging and dropping them out to your tracks area so that you don't have to rely on the arpeggiator. And the benefit over the tricks I showed you in the previous two videos is that you can sort of bake in the arpeggiator into the MIDI just by dragging and dropping it out to the tracks area. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. If you wanna take your workflow to the next level, you've gotta check out boombox.io. Let's face it, as producers and creatives, we're constantly optimizing our plugins, software, hardware, and production techniques we use to make music. Why not optimize and streamline how you communicate with clients and collaborators so you can spend less time answering emails and spend more time actually making music? Boombox is the ultimate platform for music collaboration. You can upload audio files, stems, multi-tracks, full DAW sessions, lyrics, really any file you want, and securely invite collaborators. You can use the web app, the macOS sync app, or use their mobile apps to listen to your tracks and make production notes on the go. If you wanna check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so like I said, all of the examples I'm gonna show you in this video all use the drag and drop features within the arpeggiator. So we're kinda of gonna be using the arpeggiator as a creative tool where we can bake in these sequences into MIDI regions and just drag and drop them on the track. And so they're just printed into the piano roll editor where you can edit them further if you like. And the great thing about this is you're not stuck to just one pattern per track because you can drag and drop things, then change it, drag and drop it, change it, and so forth and so on. Now, the way these drag and drop features work is you have to have the play button on and you also have to work in latch mode. Now, in a previous video, I demonstrated that you can use latch mode to play individual notes or chords, and you don't have to hold down the note or chord on your MIDI controller. So let's try that. Uh, the very first chord here is an A minor triad. When I'm done, I can turn off the playback, and you'll see that these two icons light up. This one is your drag and drop option. You're pulling the MIDI region out of the arpeggiator. So you just click and drag, drop that over on the track. And I can even loop that because this chord goes for two bars. So the next thing I'm gonna do is clear, turn playback back on. And then I'm just gonna play the next chord, which is an F chord. I'm gonna play an F major seven. Stop playback drag and drop that chord in. And then at bar 60 here, I have two different chords. I have an E minor and a G major. So I'll go ahead and clear, turn playback back on. Here's E minor seven. Drag and drop that in. I'm gonna trim it up because I'm only gonna use the first half of it and then clear that. And then I'll play my last chord, which is a G major. Drag and drop that in trim it up, pull it into place. Then I can drag over all of these and press J to join them together. Now, the thing you have to remember to do here is once you're done using the arpeggiator as a drag and drop tool, bypass it because otherwise it's gonna play everything in here um, you know, with the arpeggiator. We, we've already baked the rhythms and the chords into the MIDI, so there's no need to, uh, to have the arpeggiator on at all. So that's how you can build chord progressions and rhythmic chord sequences with the drag and drop feature in the arpeggiator. 
Now, in addition to generating chords that you can drag and drop in, you can also use this to generate monophonic patterns like melodies and bass lines. All you have to do is make sure latch is on, make sure that playback is on, create a pattern that you like, and play a chord or a set of notes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chord. Yeah, I like that one. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in. And then I'm gonna play another one. So I hit clear with a different set of notes here. Let's go ahead and drag that in. And then the next chord, like I said before, is F major. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear. Let's come up with uh, a different uh, pattern here. Let's try adding some extra notes here and maybe we'll shorten some of these up a bit. And so this is what I was saying before, you can use this to sort of change up uh, the pattern. Let's see what that sounds like. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I'll go ahead and drag that in. That'll be for my F chord. And then, like I said before, I have uh, E minor. So it's clear, play, play an E minor. So there's a new one. Drag that in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here for the last chord, which is the G chord. Clear, play. Drag and drop that in. But this time I'm going to use the second half of that. And there we go. So now I can bypass the arpeggiator. And I've got this melody that I was able to generate just using the drag and drop feature in the arpeggiator. Yeah, I can play around with the velocities in here if I want these a little louder. I can go ahead and repeat this a few times. Okay, so in all of these examples so far, I've only been using this bottom drag and drop option. So what this does is it allows you to drag and drop the output of the arpeggiator. So the signal with the arpeggiation applied to it. But what's this top one do? Well, this allows you to drag and drop the input from the arpeggiator. So I find this one really helpful if you want to build chords one by one and you don't wanna to have to play them in in real time, but you want to hear what they're gonna sound like with the arpeggiator and you don't want the arpeggiation to be baked into the MIDI region. So for this, the process is exactly the same. You turn on playback and you turn on latch mode, and then you simply play in your first chord or set of notes. Stop playback and then drag and drop in that top option. So this is going to just drag in the chord itself with nothing else on it. Let's say I want my next chord to go here on bar three. So I'll clear turn playback back on, and then play my next chord. Now, the reason why I played that one a few times is I was trying to get the velocities right. I wanted the first step to be the loudest. So I'll drag that in. And then my next chord, I'll just clear, turn play back on. Stop playback, drag in the chord. And then my final chord here, clear, start playback. And 
and then drag that in. So now what I have are just four chords that I can trim out, join together with J, open these up in the piano roll editor, and if I want to extend these out all to the next uh, notes, I just select Command A, uh, select all with Command A, and then hit Shift backslash, hit Shorten, and there we go. And now I don't have to bypass the arpeggiator like before because the effects aren't baked into the chords or the uh, the MIDI effect is not baked into the chords. So this allows you to use the same pattern, but then sort of rely on uh, the chords here rather than having everything baked in. Uh, one thing you do want to remember here, though, is to turn off latch mode so that the arpeggiator uh, works. So that's just another way that you can use this by dragging and dropping the input signal, the input MIDI. Okay, I've got one more trick for you in this video. This one's really cool if you want to sort of type in your sequences one note at a time and not have to worry uh, about the timing as much. And the way you get to this is you click on this little arrow in the lower left corner, and this is called Silent Capture. So when you turn on Silent Capture, you're going to see that switches to latch and then the add mode. And then it's going to also sort of flash the playback button here. And what this is doing is it's waiting for you to input notes. So I'm going to build a baseline note, uh, note by note. So maybe something like that. And if you turn off silent capture and then press play, turn off playback, and then I can drag and drop the output, and it drags and drops in that pattern that I just created. So I'm just gonna repeat this for two bars, and we're gonna go to the next chord, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna clear, turn on silent capture, and then play in whatever pattern I want step by step. Turn off silent capture, press play. And then just drag and drop this onto the track. And so this really functions like step input for the arpeggiator. Let's get our last two uh, bass lines here for these last two chords. So again, I'll clear, turn on silent capture, play in the bass line note by note. You know, I didn't like that one. Let's click clear. And then we'll do that. Drag and drop that in, loop that out. And then our last chord here, which I believe is uh, E minor. So once again, turn on silent capture. Drag that in and then pull that up. Okay, so now at this point, because I uh, inputted each note, I don't need the arpeggiator on, I can just turn it off. Let's go ahead and join all these together. And you can see now we've created a baseline using that sort of step input silent capture in the arpeggiator. And there we go. That's how you can use silent capture in the arpeggiator. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.